joy to be happy, be happy in everything. Ooh, I am good with me. It's a joy to be happy, happy in everything. I am good with me. It's a joy to be. Welcome back to the show. I must admit, Grego actually did a pretty good Bob Kraft Im uh, imitation. <laughs> he had the cadence and everything right. Uh, he actually did a pretty good imitation of Bob Kraft. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show. Punk ass Bob Kraft. Yeah. Hey, uh, a little NBA talk quickly. Uh, Gordon Hayward scored 26 points, and the Utah Jazz eliminated the Los Angeles Clippers on Sunday with a 104 to 91 victory. Even when the Clippers win, even when they're doing good, they still lose. <laughs> That's right. You damn Skippy. If you're new to the show, I'm a Laker fan. And all of this hoopla surrounding the Clippers over the last couple of years just disgusts me. So, so the little era of Clipper basketball when they're, you know, not just shitty bad, you know. And when they win, they still lose. Uh, so good. The good. Uh, shouts out to the Utah Jazz, 104-91 to beating the Clippers this past weekend. Uh, closing out for the first series, their first series, uh, four to three to earn the franchise's first postseason victory since 2010. Uh, the Jazz historically have been a thorn in the side of the Lakers when they had Stockton, Malone, and all those cats. They never really were a threat, though. Uh, but they always played tough. They've been down for the last couple of years, but man, they got a nice looking young squad. Man, they got—I got to give it to them. They got a nice looking young squad. Derek Favors, George Hill added 17 points apiece for the Jazz. And uh, big win, man. Uh, it definitely is a great thing going from 25 wins to, to where they are this year and making a, uh, a, a success of the playoffs and winning a series, man. Uh, the Jazz advanced to face the top-seeded Golden State Warriors in the Western Conference semifinals. Uh, the Warriors swept Portland for to nothing and have been waiting since Wednesday to find out their next opponent. Uh, I don't see Utah clearly. I've already gone on record and say, said that the Golden State's probably going to win the whole thing this year, man. But the way Utah's been playing, they got some veterans, man. They got some nice veterans. You talk about Joe Johnson. You talk about George Hill. Derek Favors as well has been in the league for a while. The way this young kid Gobert's been playing – uh, Gordon Hayward's one of those up-and-coming players. I don't think it's going to be, you know, anything to worry about if you're a Golden State fan, man. But I think they are a better opponent uh, against the Golden State Warriors and the Clippers. Where I think they, they, they deserve to win this series, bottom line. And the Clippers and Doc Rivers, what do they do now? This is a reoccurring theme for the uh, Los Angeles Clippers. Win a bunch of games in the regular season, finish top four, top five in the Western Conference, get to the playoffs, and then they're out. Or right before the playoffs start, at the end of the year, one of their top players gets hurt. Chris Paul always seems like he's got an 
inconvenient, you know, injury that happens late in the season, misses plenty of games. Same thing with uh, with uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't even remember the boy's name right now. Uh, slam dunk kid or whatever. Uh, and so, and so, yeah. What do they do? Do they blow this thing up? Huh? Do they blow this thing up and 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 try to start over from fresh? That's probably the best thing is just to blow the whole damn thing up. Yeah, just blow the whole damn thing up. You know, go back to your lot in life, which is being an average at best basketball team. And just move on. Uh, Blake Griffin is who I was talking about. You know, Blake Griffin with this injury at the end of the year. Paul Pierce about to retire right now. So the Patriots or the Clippers doing what they do. And that's, that's be lackluster. Couldn't happen to a worse organization. <laughs> Speaking of Paul Pierce, 19-year uh, NBA career probably came to an end. I think he already announced that this was going to be his last year, so he's done. Uh, Doc Rivers, once again a disappointment. The great success in Boston. Who was it? Somebody, one of the Stewies posted yesterday on Facebook that Doc Rivers is overrated. You remember Big Baby came out earlier this year and talked about how Doc Rivers was overrated? Maybe Doc Rivers might be overrated. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. They got a ton of talent, have had a lot of talent on that team for the last couple of years, man, but it just hadn't worked out. Oh, well. Uh, also in the NBA, Isaiah Thomas had 33 points and nine assists, even though his tooth got knocked out. And the Celtics made, a 19-3, uh, made 19 three-pointers to beat the Wizards 123-111 to and take a one to nothing lead in their Eastern Conference semifinal matchup. Al Horford had 21 points, 10 boards, and nine assists. Uh, Jay Crowder finished with career playoff high at 24 points. And the Wizards were uh, more energetic at the outset, jumping out to a 16-0 advantage and leading by as many as 17 points. But the Celtics rallied with Thomas briefly sidelined once again with getting his tooth knocked out, which is very strange, which is very strange. They said that he got his tooth knocked out and they put it back in. How the hell you just stick a tooth back in the damn root in his, in his sticks? <laughs> I didn't get that. That doesn't work. This isn't a, a, a plant. You just don't pull out a plant and uproot a plant and dig another hole and stick it in there and it take root. It doesn't work like that, right? Maybe we got a dentist to listen to the show. Yeah, they took, the trainer took Isaiah Thomas's tooth and they said that he they stuck it back into his mouth, which didn't make sense at all. But he balled out of control, man. You know the tough couple of weeks that he's had with the loss of his sister, man, really, really been balling. Uh, let's be honest. The only reason that they came back and won four games in a row against the Chicago Bulls because Rondo got that got hurt. I mean, let's be honest. There was no way. I think they said there was a 22% chance that they could win that series. Rondo gets hurt, and then they go four games in a row. So some, some I guess a, a, a good thing happens for the Boston Celtics. They advance, and they win the first game in their series with the Washington Wizards. 123 to 111. Bradley Beal led Washington with 27 points. John Wall had 20 points and 16 assists. Uh, Markeith Morris, though, twisted his his ankle, and uh, in the second quarter, and so his his future and what's going to happen, he's going to be able to play in this series is coming to question. We'll definitely keep our eyes on that. The Clippers, man, they got some big decisions to make once again. Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, free agency. Uh, Carmelo Anthony has been this talk about bringing Carmelo Anthony in, making a deal possibly for Griffin and, Car- and Carmelo. Uh, Doc Rivers. I mean, Doc Rivers, once again, you've done pretty much – they kind of like the Clippers over the last couple of years with a little bit more press have kind of been like the Hawks where they're solid, they're middle of the road. You know, they're a fifth seed, a sixth seed or something like that. And then they're, you know, one and, one and out in the playoffs. And it's been many years, many years. Maybe they blow the whole thing up, man. It started from fresh. Maybe Doc's out and they try something different. But it, you know, in relative terms for the Clippers, they've had some good years. But once again, once the Clippers, always the Clippers. <laughs> Once 
Once the Clippers, always the Clippers. 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug, the Doug Stewart Show. Dot com. The Dallas Cowboys had a pretty good draft. Before I jump back in the chat, I wanted to mention the Cowboys, man. They had a pretty good draft. Um, I see B grades, B minus grades for the Dallas Cowboys as uh, they needed a defensive end uh, after Demarcus Lawrence on the whim last season and Randy Gregory bust award to Randy Gregory, who's, who they said failed another drug test this weekend, his seventh drug test. He is out for the 2017 season. <laughs> What? And I said this, man, after, you know, the third failed drug test for Randy Gregory. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Once you go past two, and when you get to three, and then you get to four, five, six, or seven, it's more than just saying that a guy's a dummy. He's got a real problem. Knowing what he has on the line, knowing that – that his future depends and his bank account depends on him getting on the field, being able to play, and you fail not one, but you fail two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think you could be placed in the category of a junkie. That man's a junkie. That man's a junkie. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. Don't stop me. That man is a junkie. All right, the fact that you fail seven drug tests, you have a real problem. So it's not even about clowning him and saying that he's a dummy or anything like that, man. Y'all pray for Randy Gregory because he's got problems. He's a junkie. And I know they don't use that term junkie in 2017 anymore, but I grew up in the 70s. And that's the term that they threw around all of the time. Uh, that's the term that, that James used when he talked about uh, Debbie Allen, uh, uh, J.J.'s girlfriend. And he was, She's a junkie, Junior. She's a junkie. Yeah. Remember Debbie Allen and J.J. went out to the prom and she jumped out of the window. She was trying to get her drugs. They left her damn drugs at the house by mistake. And she had to have them drugs so bad she jumped out of the window. Old Debbie Allen. And so Randy Gregory got real problems, man. So the Dallas Cowboys are trying to address the defensive end needs. Uh, their first pick in the first round, Taco Charlton, who a lot of people are kind of lukewarm about. But he's a big dude, man, just hulking defensive end out of Michigan. They also get uh, Chidubi Awuzi, a uh, cornerback out of Colorado, uh, another cornerback as well. Jordan Lewis, as they've lost several defensive backs over the uh uh, free agency period, Brandon Carr, Morris Claiborne, and J.J., what's that kid's name? J.J. Wilcox all left the free agency, even though a lot of Cowboy fans will tell you that, that Morris Claiborne has been a disappointment. But they had to restock, so they went out and got, in the second round, uh, a woozy from Colorado, uh, second pick number uh, 60, second round pick number 60, third round pick number 92. They get Jordan Lewis out of uh, Michigan as well. Uh, and then they get um, – uh, wide receiver, all-time yardage receiver out of North Carolina, Ryan Switzer. I don't know if he's got any relation to Barry, but kind of, you know, kind of reminds you of the classic slot. He kind of reminds you of Cole Beasley. <laughs> like, Cole Beasley for the Dallas Cowboys, same type of player. And so Dallas gets him uh, in the seventh round. They get uh, Joel Ivey, defensive tackle out of Florida, uh, Marquez White in the sixth round out of Florida State, defensive back as well. So they went defensive back heavy, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. And the last pick out of Colorado as well, they get two Colorado players, defensive tackle uh, in the seventh round, Jordan Correll. So I'm seeing B grades, uh, even B-plus grades for the Dallas Cowboys. Offensively, I think they're straight. Defensively, they started to play good at the end of last season as well. What's that kid's name? The Irving kid, man, really started to come on. For Dallas at the end of the season last year, but they fortified a defensive uh, uh, backfield and pick up a defensive end who who was had a first round grade and and size uh, and taco chart. And we'll see about him. But uh, Dallas had a relatively good draft as well. 